This week, I turned 35 years old, and I just got through the toughest, most rock-bottom years of my entire life. My life looks so different than what I had dreamed about as a little girl, but I'm so grateful and proud to say that I am now an officially divorced woman. It is five minutes after I got my divorce papers. <laughs> a proud single mother. <laughs> and starting my life over from scratch at 35. And the feeling I have right now is like I just got reincarnated into a different timeline. Like I just completed such a distinct life cycle and now I'm like a newborn baby with a blank canvas. The world is my oyster. I get to figure it out all over again. So today's video is not only my reintroduction, but I want to document this new phase of my life. I've already been on the internet for 13 years now, and now this next phase is gonna be so bomb. I'm really excited. And for anyone of you out there that have invested so much of your life and time into something like a relationship or a vision or a path, and it's not working for you and you feel so empty in life and you don't feel like you can start over or maybe you feel like you don't deserve to have the best life possible where you're waking up every day with excitement and like joy of being yourself and experiencing life. I was that person and you are not alone. I wanna share my story today, not only for uh, my freedom and release, but maybe it could resonate with you too. So let's go. I want to start the story in 2011. That is when I uploaded my first YouTube video. And the reason why it's a little trippy for me is because from that video, 22 years old, I was in college all the way until now at 35 years old. That was an entire cycle of being in the same relationship. And this is where I'm going to give my younger self a lot of compassion. But I had a very specific life path that I had chosen for myself. And those 13 years was me just building up and upping the ante, climbing this mountain of what I thought was the pinnacle of happiness and success in my life. And ever since I can remember, as like my youngest memories, I always had this deep need to be accepted. And that got expressed in me as being like a perfectionist. Like I can never just be myself. I mean, I am an Asian woman. I don't think we need to crunch the numbers so hard on where that comes from, but this is not about a blame game for my family or anything. Unfortunately, I never asked myself ever what I truly wanted to do. So I ended up following a very safe life path. But if you're new here, at 22, I graduated from UT Austin, graduated with an accounting degree, which I didn't want to do and got a corporate job right out of college. I had met the person that I was going to marry, got married by 25 years old, quit my corporate job and became a full-time entrepreneur, content creator at 28. And by the time I was 30, I had the six figures I demanded of myself. And I didn't just buy one home, I built my third hole. I mean, I needed to flex so hard to prove something. Every time I reached each milestone of arrival and success, I felt more and more empty because the expectations of what I thought I was doing failed me so hard. I mean, this is so embarrassing to admit, but my parameters for getting married was I just have to get married by 25. Like, it don't matter who, just whoever's around because I wanted to be young. I wanted to have five or six years before I had my kids. I thought that you're supposed to get married, that a woman just can't do it on her own. You're supposed to be in a couple. Like a life decision like that was trivialized as like a checkbox that I needed to check. And seriously, like for who? Like I'm the one that has to spend my life with this person. I thought I was creating this perfect life that was perfectly timed. And what I was really creating was a prison. And I neglected the most important thing, which is myself. What the hell do I wanna do in life? I never prioritize happiness. I never prioritize life purpose. I never prioritize fulfillment. I never, pri I mean, like I just did not have the mindset to pursue a happy life. I was only concerned about the outward perception of what you should do and 
what is deemed as successful in society or what my parents would think of me. Like, it's a very empty way of living. But I did it, and I am grateful for all those lessons now. So fast forwarding to when I hit my 30s five years ago, um, I started to question. I started to question. I was like, damn, okay, um, I did all the check boxes. Uh, what am I supposed to do now? Retire? How can I have achieved so much? And I can't even answer a simple question of who is Erica? Like, it was like, I had completely abandoned myself and I was in a relationship that was so freaking wrong and toxic and did not serve me. There's no guilt or shame or anything with my ex. It's just when you get married so young and you didn't know yourself then and then you evolve into a completely different person and you wake up and you're like, what cage did I just build for myself? I got a lot of questions about this uh, when I first announced my divorce, so I want to clarify it now. It got to a point where, you know, try therapy, all of that, and I was like, okay, am I gonna give this another five to 10 years or am I going to bounce out? And I was rippled with so much shame, so much judgment. I literally built my entire identity on being a wife and being married and having all the things. I'm like, how do I get out of this? This is so embarrassing. But if you're not living an authentic life, that void has to keep being filled with materialistic external shit. So I was like, okay, like if I stay in this fake ass life, um, it's also gonna be empty because I mean, you have to keep it up. But behind the scenes, I was deeply, deeply struggling. And in the middle of all of this rock bottom spiraling, uh, something incredible happened. Despite being diagnosed at 23 years old with a condition called uterus didelphes, which means I have two uteruses and also have two cervixes, and also have 12 toes, but, but that is a different story for a different video. I was told in my early 20s that I would never uh, bear my own children. I didn't think it was gonna happen. But of course, as God and the universe and life happens and unfolds in ways that we don't understand, um, I was given this amazing gift of my son to balance relationship issues with being pregnant. And I had a high-risk pregnancy. I was on bed rest at 24 weeks and it was in the middle of COVID. Those are some rough ass times. I went into early labor and then comes February 20th and my son is born. That day truly changed my life. When the doctors put my son on my chest and I heard his cry for the first time, it was like, um, I had no idea how beautiful life can be. Like I didn't know love could exist that great. And it was like, oh my God. My entire world is not me anymore. Um, and my suffering, it's my child. Like the stakes got so high at that point. It's not just about my life, it's about my son. And what kind of mother I want to be for him and how I'm going to support him. What am I going to teach him? It was like the biggest mirror got reflected back at me and it was like go time with me making a decision on how I want to craft my life. What kind of household do I want my son to be raised in? What principles and values do I want to teach him? What do I need to be as a woman to be the best mother to give to my son? And the other epiphany I had that day, and I say this story so much to my girlfriends, um, I remember being there and they're stitching me up and they didn't have a wheelchair already or something. And I was so like, I gotta go hold my baby. He got rushed to the NICU, he was six weeks early. And I remember waddling out of that labor and delivery room like 40 minutes after I gave birth. I remember passing through the threshold of that door and telling myself, no one can ever tell me shit again. If I could be told I will never have a child and then I just freaking was given the gift, this miracle child and I pushed it out of my body, like, like it was the first drip of empowerment I ever tasted. And damn, it's time to shape up and figure out where you wanna go now. So we moved into that big house that you guys have seen um, after birth and of course things did not get better. Like if you have a relationship issues before the baby, they just get worse after the baby, it's true. As a mother, you have such a different lens now. And I really felt like I was in a position where I had to choose my marriage or I had to choose my baby. It was really difficult to try to keep up being the best mother I could be, especially to a preemie child dealing with your own postpartum, your own crazy hormones. I was breastfeeding. I was trying to heal myself because I just had this existential awareness to level up who I was as a human to show up for my son. Then you have this dying relationship and marriage that you're keeping secret. 
uh, which takes pretty much all of your energy. And then this image of being a wife and upholding, you know, all the duties that come with that. And I have my own career and my career involves being in front of the camera. So just the weight of everything that was secretly going on with the fact that it was hindrance on me showing up smiley for the camera. And I remember specifically uh, the moment where I was like, oh, okay. Like it connected my body and spirit that is over. Um, I remember being on my hands and knees and I was crying just like the one millionth umpteenth tear. And I said out loud, um, I would rather die alone than be in this marriage one more day. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's time. I let go. That's the decision. How do I not share details while also not sugarcoating? If the years leading up to the decision to break up, like those three years of decision-making and stress and emotions and will I and should I and becoming a mom in COVID, if all of that was like a rowboat, the past two years of the actual divorce was like the Titanic times 10. But um, let me tell you just the most important part, which is what the divorce did to me. Being under that much emotional distress and physical, um, it, like it sounds so insane now to say it this way, but there was days like I didn't think I was gonna make it, which is insane because a divorce is gonna end eventually. Um, but when you're in it, and anyone else has been through a rough divorce can probably relate, um, it really feels like the end of the world. Like it feels like I can make a whole video series about surviving a divorce, but I completely transformed as a woman. It forced me to level up with skills that I never even had before. Judge Bombioni has one of my best phrases and it's like, it's not what you do to get through the divorce. It's who you have to become to get through the divorce. Well, I mean, God, the legal system. And to have all those dynamics going in a container that you have freaking no control over is devastating. But especially for the questions I get about if I made the right decision or not, even in the lowest pits, and there were many of the entire journey, never once did I question that I was making the right decision. So it was never about, oh, am I doing the right thing? It was only a matter of surviving the storm. The crazy thing about a divorce is that at the very beginning, you have your tangibles, your intangibles, okay? You've got all the stuff. You've got your joint finances, you've got your home, you got your car, you've got all the material shit that you think you care about, okay? And then you have the intangibles, like your peace, your harmony, your new life, your freedom, your self-worth, your self-love. And in the beginning, it's like, you're just fighting over this shit. I started to realize, oh my God, this is the only thing that mattered. I looked at my ass a couple years ago where I would spend months, you know, obsessing over what $3,000 credenza I was going to buy for my foyer. Um, I literally eat off of a $20 card table right now as my dining table. And I've never been happier in my entire life, baby. <laughs> like to have all of these external materialistic shit define me and control me. Now they have no power over me. I really, it's like, like in the bottomest pit of hell. I found myself and my priorities in life got reshuffled in a way that it like literally had to take that much torture for me to reframe myself. The only thing that matters is my peace, my freedom, and my child. With the support of my friends and my family, I am forever indebted to my support system because I was so lucky to have one um, in order to survive and get out. And I am like given this second chance at life and I don't take it for granted one freaking minute. Like if I'm gonna have the second chance of life, I am going to rebuild myself and reinvent myself in the most powerful way that I did not give myself the opportunity the first go around. Instead of having this stringent way of, I need to have this thing and I need to be this. It's like, I'm going to be a thriving, healthy, happy woman. I'm going to be that for my son. I'm going to give him all the freedom and space to just exist and be happy. I mean, literally, I'm 35 years old and it's news to me that I was just born worthy and loved and I deserve to be cherished. Like that, I mean, that's news to me. So now I don't have to front anymore. I don't have to flex, I don't have to be fake. I don't have to be anything but myself now. And I get to lead my life with love 
and what my soul desires. I mean, like, oh my God, for all the things that I loved. Baby, your 30s are the best. I've never felt more sexy, more powerful, more capable. Now that I'm on the other side of it, I can tell you what else out there. Every tear, it was all worth it. Because at the end of the day, I always tell myself this. If I'm sitting on my deathbed, you're not only gonna like meet your maker, right? But you have to answer to yourself. Did I live a life that I can be proud of, that I'm happy about? Like, I don't want to be sitting on my deathbed and be like, oh, I'm so glad I did what that person told me to do. Hell no. You want to sit here and be like, damn, this is what I did. These are the children I raised. This is the legacy I left. I had so much fun doing this, this, and this. I traveled to this place. I ate this food. What a good life. That is what I want to say to myself. So that is what helped me with my decision to just say, it. I don't care how hard it is to get out. I'm going to fight my way out of this. Now I get to do it all over again. My way, my turns with this fresh perspective of gratitude and love. I appreciate it now because I had to lose it all and walk away from it all to get it. Oh, baby. Damn, I feel so good right now. This next chapter, it is going to be such a long journey of healing, but that's okay because I'm giving myself the grace and compassion to just go with it. I perfectly planned every little thing of my life from like teenage years. And now this next chapter, I don't gotta stress. Like I wanna figure it out as I go, one step at a time as a thriving, independent, working single mother. I am co-parenting by the way. So both of us prioritizing my son's well-being and health is the most important thing. I don't need to be stressing like that anymore. I don't need to be worried about outcomes. I need to just purely take every day as the gift it is and trust that it's all gonna work out. Anyway, if you made it this far and you're interested in the content, um, I've got so much more uh, to provide you in terms of value and difference of content. Of course, I'm gonna be doing style. I haven't really been focused on what I look like uh, the past couple of years, so. I'm gonna be actually doing something really fun uh, later on this year. Uh, getting rid of everything and reinventing my entire style from scratch. I can't wait to take you guys on that journey. It's gonna just unfold a little bit slowly um, just because I'm like, I wanna do like maybe Q and A's. You guys can just tell me what you guys wanna hear about that. We still got the travel and style. Don't worry, I'm not abandoning why you guys subscribed to me in the first place, but drop any ideas of what types of videos you guys wanna see down below in the comments. Give your girls a like, subscribe. Thank you guys for everything and supporting me. New life, baby. <laughs> Love you.